As a catastrophic humanitarian crisis unfolds in Ukraine, hundreds of thousands losing their lives and millions fleeing the war zone, seeking refuge in neighboring countries, nonprofit organizations and good Samaritans come forward and help those displaced communities and individuals. We have one such Samaritan in our studio today. We welcome Mr. Satish Mehtani, CEO of Mehtani Restaurant Group, who will be visiting Ukraine and contributing his time and resources to help humanity in Ukraine. Welcome to our studio, Mr. Mehtani. Thank you very much. So you're making this trip to Ukraine. Let's talk about I'm this. I'm planning to go on April 11th for about eight, nine days and meet the mayor of Warsaw, Poland, and see the sites where we can put our satellite kitchens. And if everything goes all right, then I will proceed to India and get the chefs from there, as we did in 1991 in Kuwait. Tell me, what is what do you mean by satellite kitchen? Satellite kitchen means that you have got clay ovens mm -hmm. and you are having the kitchen in the open, in the tents. Oh. And then you are not having one kitchen, you are having seven, eight kitchen, depending upon the number of people you are supposed to make the food. So one satellite kitchen can make about 1,000 people at a time. At a time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for that, we need about three, four clay ovens, Okay, for the bread, for the meat, and for the vegetables. Mm -hmm. how, how did you decide that you want to go on this path, and especially in Ukraine? Well, I was a refugee myself. You were? Yes. Talk during, about that first. During the partition of India in 1947, I was shot, I was stabbed, and my brother died. I was holding him in the hand. He was oh also shot. Since I was a refugee, Mm -hmm. I came to this country, again I was a refugee, starting with one quarter in my pocket. And when I see the fate of these young women and children, old people, walking barefoot and not having food for days and days, not having even water, so I want to do something because we are what we leave behind. That is true. And that is your legacy you want yeah, to leave so behind. So I want to go whatever I can do, and I'm lucky enough that I have got friends mm -hmm. all over the world who is willing to help me as they helped me in other man-made and natural disasters, mm -hmm. like in Nepal. In so the Nepal earthquake, this was 2015, April, and you mentioned April 2015, earlier. it was 7.9 yes. Richter scale, and more than 10,000 people died. And I was in Nepal in 1967, 68, as an executive engineer mm -hmm. in charge of a Trishuli hydroelectric project. So I knew inch and inch of Nepal. Mm -hmm. So we, we went there with Dr. Rekha Khetri. She is fortunately from New Jersey State. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we had the helicopter, we visited different places. And these are all the trips you made from U.S.? U.S., I made six trips. Did, did the government help you, the government in U.S. or government in India? We did not ask for the government of India. We asked our friends mm -hmm. because the government was doing their own work. Mm -hmm. We did not want to interfere. Okay. We wanted to do, do, do in our own way. So we got about over 290 children. We did not know whether their parents were alive or dead. Oh. So they were in different places. So we gave them clothes. We gave them toys. We made the arrangement for their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's... We made them feel that they belong to this world mm -hmm. and there is somebody to look after them. So you, you set up the satellite kitchen over there no, not in Nepal. That was in this. Uh, what to call Kuwait. Kuwait, you did yeah, not. in Nepal. In Nepal, we just gave the money, and they were getting the breakfast because they were infant children. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and talk about your efforts in Kuwait. Yes, in Kuwait, uh, my lovely friend, we did our degree together and he was in Kuwait. And after the Gulf War in March 1991, when it was over, we saw that there are thousands of people. Some have lost eyes, some have lost one leg, some have lost arms, tortured, and they were not getting proper food. So with the help of the Saudi and Kuwaiti government, we brought chefs mm -hmm. and clay ovens from India and we made satellite kitchens because mm -hmm. each satellite kitchen can make food for 800 to 1000 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did it. The ingredients were supplied by the mm -hmm. Saudi government. We were supplying the labor and uh, they liked our project so much that they ex extended for two years. Wow. And uh, of course, then they were paying for it, but first 15 days mm -hmm. from our site. So as a sensible thinking individual, I know you have been contributing to such crisis, but uh, what would you comment on the role of US or unnecessary wars that happened or the Kuwait war itself? Well, I'm not a politician, I cannot say and I cannot give any comment. Things do happen, wars do happen. Freedom never comes cheap. You have to pay the price. So like politician of India, we mm -hmm. paid the price. Over half a million people on both sides, in India and Pakistan, were killed, tortured, mm -hmm. for no reason. For no reason. Yeah. Innocent people on both sides were killed. It is only a handful of people who are not good, otherwise more than 90% people are nice on both sides. I was shot and stabbed in Pakistan and my life was also saved by a Muslim. Okay. Yeah. You know, so you can see, similarly, I am very proud to say that my parents helped and saved the lives of about more than 30 wow. Muslims in Firozpur, mm -hmm. when they came to ask, we put them in a separate room and told them there was nobody because we locked the house from outside. Mm -hmm. So they thought that there was nobody inside. And the next day, we helped them in crossing into the Pakistan. Mm -hmm. After that, I've been to Pakistan once. The way love and affection was given to me, I cried. Oh. I got so much of love and affection that it was unbelievable. Uh, mm -hmm. So people over there, they meet, they greet you like we are one. Yes. It is the politicians mm -hmm. who divide. Mm -hmm. See, we have one religion. No Hindu, no Muslim, no Sikh, no Christian. Religion of humanity. Religion of humanity. God is the only one. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderfully put. And you're also the chairman and founder of the International Mission of Mercy. Yes. So I how started did that... this in about 29, 30 years ago. This was at the time the Gulf War finished. And uh, I continued it. And a uh, lot of my friends over here, like Dr. Jagdish Bharara, Buddha Sharma, Ajay Gupta, Rajiv Sharma, Sandeep Sharma, and many more, it is difficult to name everybody's name. They helped me in collecting the funds, mm -hmm. and we did whatever we could afford to do. I have been lucky in that way. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, I have given my chairmanship of IMM USA to Ambassador Ruth Davis, mm -hmm. 
who is the ex director general of the State Department, because I am busy taking care of my wife, who is unfortunately, as you know, fighting for her life due to Alzheimer. So she is now taken over, and she is doing a good job. I'm fortunate in that. I've I've met her actually, and uh, you know I've had the experience of you know interacting with her on various occasions. So beautiful person, beautiful soul. I I think I was blessed to have married her. Mm -hmm. We lived 38 years very happy married life. Of course. But unfortunately, I don't know why it happened to her. Why not to me? I am 14 years older than her that she became a victim of Alzheimer. Like you, like you said, we don't always have the answers. The, the wars, we don't have an answer. Right. We don't have an answer to certain things then. And you were recognized by Mother Teresa for your sharing of caring philosophy. What is that philosophy? Well, sharing and caring is that Mother Teresa, for no personal reasons, being a Christian, went to India, Calcutta, and took care of over 25,000 homeless or orphaned children. That motivated me that if a woman of a different religion can come and take care of children in India, why not we do something? They are our brothers and sisters and our children. So I requested President Clinton at that time. Mm -hmm. He helped me and uh, we, I went to Calcutta and I met her. I had the pleasure of meeting her. Generally, she meets everyone with Namaste. Mm -hmm. I don't know, somehow, she touched my hand and was holding for about two, three minutes. And I felt as if I, the, totally, I am just standing on the vacuum. Oh. Never dreamt of wow. that I will have that. I'll show you the picture. This is the picture of Mother Teresa. Okay, so you she is holding my. Camera? She is holding my hand. Wow. Generally, she does namaste. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, I talked to her for two, three minutes, and she said, I'm happy that you are doing something for the homeless people. Mm -hmm. Somehow she came to know that uh, from my three, four restaurants in Manhattan, Edison, and Morristown, whatever the food is left, and which is, in a, not, uh, which is good, eatable, the next two days, I used to give in Morristown in the mission, Marathon mission, wow. for homeless people. Mm -hmm. So somehow she came to know, she said, I'm happy mm -hmm. what you are doing, keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. So after that, I had the chance to meet her again. Mm -hmm. So every time I met, twice, twice I met her, I felt very much that uh, this is the real way of doing something. Mm -hmm. We must share the suffering of others, not only the happiness, and always give something what we have mm -hmm. to those who need it. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your plans in Ukraine again. How will you reach there? Like what are the logistics if somebody See, wants to join you? You know, there will be people who would be so inspired by your actions. Well, when I come back after making my feasibility study, how many, how much funds we need, so I have already written to Senator Menendez, to Senator Corey, to Congressman Frank Pellon, asking for their help. And I'm likely to meet them before I go, in case I don't, because their plate is also full. They are very, very busy. When I come back, I'll approach them and we will decide that how much funds we need, how much we can contribute, how much we need from the government, or from other donors. What we are going to do is we are going to serve freshly baked bread, vegetables, dessert, kheer, or whatever you call, 
and uh, vegetables and give it in a paper plates to them. They can sit and eat there. Mm -hmm. Because when you make a bread and if you are going to eat after six or eight hours, then the taste goes. Mm -hmm. It is not that taste which you have the fresh one. And secondly, we don't know when they eat or where they eat. There is a provision. Do they have kitchen there or not? So there they can sit and eat. We will give them soft drinks. Mm -hmm. Similarly, this is the same thing we did in Kuwait. Same thing we did in um, Nepal. We used to give them in the breakfast, cup of milk, mm -hmm. butter, toasted, then eggs. And the lunch we'll give them vegetables and meat, rice, whatever their food is. Mm -hmm. They will eat there. We used to employ local people to feed these children. Similarly, there are also some people who are handicapped. We will have a lot of laborers available there. We will have them to feed them so that they should realize that we feel that they are important. They are needed in this mm -hmm. world. In this selfish world, they are needed. We respect them. So it is our duty to feed them. Well. How many people are going to Ukraine with you? No, I am going myself. I, as I told you, I am going to make a feasibility study. Okay. Okay. Once it is approved, the funds are arranged, how much we can pay, how much we can get from other donors. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to get local labor from there, skilled labor, mm. like, uh, you know, Tanduria or Karim guy, or the guy who makes naan. Mm -hmm. We will get it from, most probably from India, oh. okay? So this operation will take about a month, month and a half mm -hmm. to come into existence. You so are 88 years old and you will be doing all this by yourself. Pardon? I said you are 88 years old. Not old, I'm 88 years young. Yes, my <laughs> bad, you are. <laughs> you are. Yeah, I'm 88 years young. Till I am alive, I am young. Yes. Yes. You, it is here. If you say that you are old, then you are gone. Because after the age of 80, they say, oh, this is the time for retirement. Uh, now you are getting this, you are getting that. I am grateful to God that I am in a good health. I am taking care of my beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. She needs me. And also I am taking care of people who need my help. Whatever I can do. And I am blessed that I am surrounded by very, very well-to-do, nice gentlemen who have human heart, who are part of our organization, who d donate, who give time. And also there will be many other donors who will come forward. So thank you so much, Mr. Mehtani, for your time. We pray that the crisis in Ukraine ends sooner than later. All the best for your trip. Thank you very much. I need your blessings and I, I'm sure you will keep us in your prayers. And uh, hopefully I'll come back and I'll meet you and tell you All what stories, is our yes. schedule for this project to start. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks.